So right, worker threads crash course. All right, let's see, does this work the way I want it to? It kind of does. Um, yeah, so I'm kind of stuck with the title because I chose it, but it's really, this is really more like an introduction to the things I like slash use slash want to talk about in worker threads. Or perhaps even more accurately, I was doing a thing and I wanted to talk about the thing and I ended up talking about worker threads so that I could stand up here and talk about the thing. Um, so I talk fast. I usually say I will try not to and I will fail and I am sorry. But I have 25 minutes and like 40 billion slides. So talking fast is my superpower right now. I know it's not very Hawaii to talk really fast, but doing the best I can. Anyway, my name is Rich and I work for the University of California at their San Francisco campus in the library. We, and I'm, inclu I'm including myself in this, we all act like the internet didn't exist until Amazon and Pets.com came along. But government institutions, including public universities like the University of California, were there for decades working on hard problems like F and Ethernet, how does it work? One of the JSConf Hawaii organizers had a blog post about the role of the University of Hawaii in, uh, in that sort of stuff, and you should read it because it's really fascinating. Um, anyway, as you might imagine, the UCSF library does not have an extraordinarily large DevRel budget. Um, I don't have a lot of DevRel positions. There's not a lot of money around for me to travel to tropical locales to attend conferences and talk about JavaScript. So for making it possible for people like me, and perhaps more importantly, people who are not like me in several respects, uh, to be on the stage of this conference, mad props to the JSConf Hawaii organizers and the sponsors. Uh, so I am the composer of a rock opera. This would normally be my fun fact, by the way, but since it was part of my talk, I, 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 I held it back. I'm the composer of a rock opera about a steakhouse. And it includes dancers in, in steak suits and things like that. Uh, um, it sounds, I hope this works, it sounds something like this. Okay, it's gonna, hang on. No, no, wait. It's really, really groovy. So anyway, um, but uh, we're gonna, that's actually the good thing to fail because I didn't actually come here to uh, play excerpts from a, from a rock opera. I just bring it up because I put most of the, most of the like, I put a link to the slides and a link to all the things I talk about in here uh, at palacefamilysteakhouse.com. Um, so now the only reason I get to stand up here and play excerpts from my rock opera is because I work on Node. By the way, uh, who runs Node? Everybody does. If you, if you don't think you did, you run Node, right? Okay. Um, so uh, if you're using this, yeah, it doesn't matter. Anyway, point is, uh, I only have 25 minutes. So I'm gonna, um, uh, if you're running Node, you're running a lot of code that I wrote on a 2013 MacBook. Just point that out there. Um, so, <laughs> so, um, so uh, me and like 200 other, 2,000 other people. But anyway. Um, so some quick disclaimers, the views expressed are my own and not necessarily those of my employer, that's a standard disclaimer. Uh, also, the views expressed are my own and not necessarily those of Node. There are a lot of other people involved in Node and naturally we all don't see everything the same way. Just two days ago, it was decided to remove a handful of deprecated APIs from the code base that I think we should just leave in there. So clearly my opinions are not those of Node necessarily, uh, but I wasn't nearly as angry as this person was about it. Anyway, with that out of the way, back to Node. Hey, have you heard about worker threads? Um, they were introduced in Node 10.5.0, but it required a command line flag to use in that version. So in Node 12, uh, you don't need a command line flag. And uh, you really want to use 12.11 or newer because that's the first version where worker threads were uh, determined to be stable rather than experimental. And really you want to use 12.15.0 because that's the version that was released like a day or two ago that fixes some security issues. Um, <laughs> If you like to live on the edge, use the current version that, that won't be supported yet in a few months, but it's Node 13.8.0, which is the version that was released a few days ago with security fixes. Um, anyway, yeah, worker threads. What are they even? Um, so they're kind of like web workers, but different. There's no, there's no shared worker, for example. Uh, oh, that's supposed to, there it is. Okay, uh, if, you, if you've not used web workers, don't worry, stay with me. Um, they're also kind of like threads in other programming languages, but also not like threads in other programming languages. If you use threads in other programming languages, cool. If not, don't worry, stay with me. Man, that image takes a while to load, it's pretty big. Okay, um, anyway, JavaScript is single-threaded, as we all know, even if you don't know what that means, there's an excellent chance you've heard JavaScript is single-threaded before seeing it on this slide. Uh, that's because there's one cold, hard, unchanging fact in this ever-changing world in which we live in, 
And that unquestionable fact is JavaScript is single-threaded, arguably. Literally, arguably, because like some people like to argue about this. Um, I don't want to have that argument, though. So the point is, your code does one thing at one time. Uh, it's why this program never exits. There's only one execution. Uh, I'm sorry. It's why the, uh, there's, only uh, there's only one execution thread handling this code. Uh, the code in the set timeout, which would cause the while loop to stop, never executes, right? Um, it's, uh, you know, it's just going to sit in the while loop forever, and, uh, and, and the timeout won't fire until the while loop exits. The while loop's never going to exit, so the timeout never fires. Stuck in an infinite loop forever. Classic deadlock, right? Um, so this code will run forever or until you press control C or you turn off your computer or whatever, but it's not going to exit cleanly and whatever causes it to exit, it's not going to be the set timeout. This is called blocking the event loop. You may have heard that phrase before. You've heard it in Max's talk like 20 minutes ago. Um, he recommended uh, Sam Roberts' video. That's great. It's a great, great talk. I recommend this one. This is uh, What the Heck is the Event Loop Anyway by Philip Roberts. If you get nothing else out of this talk, let it be that you should get more than one thing out of this talk. But if you get, only get two things from this talk, let the second one be that you want to watch this talk. Okay, that talk, not this talk. <laughs> See, this is what happens when I have to compress four hours worth of material into 25 minutes. Anyway, there's a link to that talk at palacefamilystakeus.com. Now, you may be thinking, but Node is asynchronous. I don't really have to worry about blocking the event loop. You're probably not thinking that, but you might be. Someone might be. It can, uh, you know, Node can effectively do many things at once, like handle multiple simultaneous HTTP requests or read multiple files. Max was just telling, about, uh, telling us about this in the last talk, and his slides were gorgeous, so it must be true. <laughs> and it is true, because Max is a good egg. He would not lead you astray. Um, but the built-in asynchronous nature of Node has been around input-output, I.O. That's why I mentioned files, and it's why I mentioned HTTP. Uh, if you're... If you're doing, say, data science stuff, maybe, or um, uh, like processing graphics, you know, image, image processing, uh, or basically anything that's CPU intensive, then let's just say that the default state of things in Node and in JavaScript uh, is not as asynchronous. So prior to worker threads, the usual way people would offload CPU in a non-blocking way in Node was the cluster module. And if that's working for you, great. But here's the thing, cluster spreads your work out, workload out across multiple processes, and each of those processes has independent memory and so on, so that makes sharing large amounts of data problematic, and each process consumes the full amount of RAM required uh, by node. So this can be really inefficient. Again, though, if it's working for you, great. But if it doesn't work for, you, it's, if it doesn't work for a lot of things, and even if it is working, uh, worker threads will often work out better, and here's why. Worker threads are lightweight. It's not a whole process, it's just a thread. Um, and they're better at sharing data, which we'll talk about briefly, and then I'll do some hand-waving stuff and tell you to go look at the documentation. Um, so let's dive in. Uh, here's a Hello World example, and let's just go through it step by step. The first line pulls in three things from the worker threads module. It pulls in the, uh, let's see here, so starting from the right-hand side, so it pulls in the parent port, it pulls in the ismain thread, boolean, and it also pulls in the worker class. And, um, uh, yeah, so ismain thread and the parent port. Um, so we use ismain thread to, um, to make sure we are, uh, we are not using, we're not inside a worker thread already. Um, basically, we're checking, you know, we're checking that we're not in a worker thread so, so that we know that it's okay to launch a worker thread. If we didn't do that, we might be in a worker thread that launches a worker thread that launches a worker thread that launches a worker thread, and it's just worker threads all the way down until you run out of, I don't know, stack, heap, something, some kind of RAM. Um, anyway, some kind of resource. Uh, this check is usually only necessary if you have your worker thread code and your main thread code in the same file. I don't usually like to do that, but uh, for a Hello World example, it seemed convenient to just have one blob of code and not like, here's the word. So that's what I did, is main thread. Uh, cool. Anyway, uh, so... We're in the main thread, so what we're going to do is create a worker thread. So we use the constructor for the worker class, and that's what that new worker is all about, right? New is the keyword for constructors um, in JavaScript. And we pass it underbar underbar file name, which is the special Node.js variable that says, uh, you know, the file, the path to the file that contains the, the, the code currently being executed. If you didn't know that that was what that was, now you do. 
Um, you can create a worker thread to run any JavaScript spot file you specify, but like I said here, we're just keeping it in one file. You can also pass it a string that, and, and, and tell it that this is a blob of code to execute. I don't like to do that because that's basically eval, and I, you know, we've all been taught that eval is, you know, you know, God kills a kitten or something like that when eval, you know, um, you know, and so, you know, like to avoid it. But um, anyway, uh, so we've created a worker. Um, and now let's listen for messages from the worker. Uh, this is the usual event listener syntax in Node. Remember, we're in the main thread still, not the worker thread. We're listening for messages, uh, message events on the worker we've created. And when we get one, we're going to use console log to print the message. OK. So and that's it for the main thread. That's all we're doing. Now remember, we were in an if block that checked if we were in the main thread. So now let's use the else block and do the right stuff for when we're in the worker threads. And all we're going to do is use parent port to send a message to the main thread. Uh, in the main thread, parent port will be null, but uh, you know, so if we want to send a message to the worker from the parent port, we use the port, the post message method that's on the worker instance. We'll see that later. Uh, sorry that I'm talking so fast. Uh, but in a worker thread, parent port dot post message, like we see there, can be used to send messages to the main thread. So let's use it to send a message that says hello world. And that's the end of the file. You'll remember that in the main thread, we set up a listener that would take the message and print it out. So this is the convoluted way to console log hello world. Not terribly useful. There are much easier ways to do that, of course. But it does introduce the very basic concepts of worker threads. And now let's do something equally contrived but more interesting. And I'll try to slow down a little bit. Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon. Perhaps you remember the game. Uh, if not, it's simple. Given the name of an actor in a film, your job is to, well, that's a cool effect. Um, <laughs> your job should you choose to accept it, is to connect them to Kevin Bacon in six or fewer steps in the following manner. <clears throat> Let's say you're challenged to connect Katy Perry to Kevin Bacon. I don't think this is going to get old. <laughs> in six or fewer steps. Uh, Katy, Perry was, Katy Perry was in Zoolander 2 with John Malkovich. And John Malkovich was in Queen's Logic with Kevin Bacon. Boom, Katy Perry to Kevin Bacon in two steps. I've seen neither of those films. Um, anyway, there are already websites that solve Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon by using IMDB data. Uh, several years ago, I wanted to do this for musicians playing on recordings of individual songs. So I made a site called Music Roots, and it's been broken for a long time because someone who I won't say what, who it was, but removed an API that I was dependent on, and then I never bothered fixing it. Anyway, it's been broken for a long time, so let's fix it. So first, surprisingly, there is no usable database available on what musicians play on what tracks on what recordings. And some people say, what about all music? They only have information on who played on what album, not track by track information. Other people ask me about music brains. They only have artists associated with tracks, not individual musicians. Some people ask about discogs. They have published album credits, but sometimes the album credits don't list track by track data, and often they are wrong, even intentionally so. Uh, ask me for examples after the talk, because I, I love talking about this sort of stuff. Um, uh, but otherwise, uh, just know that Discogs data correctly reflects what's on an album sleeve, which does not correctly reflect what is in reality all the time. That brings us to Wikidata, which has some data along these lines, but way less than you'd think. That's cool, though. It's Wikidata, so everyone can add data to it, but it's very, very unusably slow for the many, many, many queries that would be required to do this. So I built my own database and published it. It's very incomplete, but it will do here. Uh, I also built a rudimentary little visualizer for it, and we'll see that in a bit. Uh, so, okay, in order to solve these things, we could use breadth-first search. And many of you, maybe most of you, maybe all of you, I don't know, uh, may already know what breadth-first search is. But just in case, I am now going to give the world's worst overview of breadth-first search. Let's go back to connecting Katy Perry to Kevin Bacon. Step one, is Katy Perry Kevin Bacon? That's a JavaScript tri triple equal there in the middle. The answer is obviously no. Step two, find everyone that was in a movie with Katy Perry. Do any of those people happen to be Kevin Bacon? And the answer is still no. Step three, find everyone that was in a movie with any of those people that were in a movie with Katy Perry. Do any of those people happen to be Kevin Bacon? And as we saw before with the Katy Perry, John Malkovich, Kevin Bacon thing, the answer is yes, so we're done. Congratulations, you just witnessed the worst explanation of breadth first search ever, but we're not done. Let's do a slightly better explanation. This will be the second worst explanation of Breath First Search ever. We're again going to connect Katy Perry and Kevin Bacon, but this time not through movies. This time let's do it through music. 
Kevin Bacon has a band with his brother, Michael Bacon, and the band is called the Bacon Brothers. I am not making that up. <laughs> so let's see if we can connect Katy Perry to Kevin Bacon via music. Step one, is Katy Perry Kevin Bacon? No. Uh, so here's a visualization of Katy Perry and everyone she recorded with on her album, One of the Boys, which I'm sorry to say is the only album of hers that I have in the data set. You can open a pull request to fix that if you want to correct that massive injustice. But anyway, Katy Perry is a circle in the middle, and each circle in the surrounding ring is someone who is one step away from Katy Perry because they recorded with her on their album. Notably absent in that ring of people, Kevin Bacon. Now, imagine we take each of those circles in the ring around Katy Perry, and we find out everyone who recorded with each of those people. And we take all those people and make an outer ring with circles for each of those people. Now, I didn't do that. But I did scrawl this blue line around things to show where the outer ring of circles would be, and the number of circles, the number of circles in that ring is going to grow exponentially, or at least exponentially-ish. It's going to grow very, very quickly, which is part of why I didn't do it. Um, so you don't want to see all those circles anyway, but I'm here to tell you something exciting about that outer ring. It totally has Kevin Bacon in it, and that's basically breadth first search. Now we can take a look at the results and instruct our path. So here's what the path looks like, if you don't believe me. It's Katy Perry to Dave Stewart, Dave Stewart to John Bon Jovi to Kevin Bacon. OK, so that's breadth first search. Now let's implement it. No, no, just kidding. Uh, for the purpose of this presentation, it's an implementation detail. And there are trade-offs and various ways to implement it that we don't really have time to go into. You can check out the repo this repository for how I implemented it, uh, as well as two other algorithms we'll talk about in a bit. But the important thing is that our approach will keep the CPU busy rather than do a bunch of work up front. This is so that we can see how cool worker threads are, but it's also a legitimate trade-off one might make in the real world. It's not always worth it to spend a bunch of time up front pre-processing if it's too time consuming or takes up too, many, too much storage or if there's too much unpredictability about what you're gonna get, et cetera. So here's what it looks like. Let's step through this. Okay, the first line gets all the tracks for the start person. Let's say it's Aretha Franklin and puts all those tracks at the element at index zero. Uh, that's index zero in the array of tracks for the start person. Now, the index indicates how many steps we've gone from the start individual. So um, uh, this next line populates the corresponding array of individuals that are, in, that are the source of the tracks above, again, in index zero. In this case, it's an array of just one individual, na namely Aretha Franklin. Uh, for the two lines starting here, we're going to do the exact same thing for the target person. Let's say it's Carrie Brownstein. This line checks to see if we have a match by seeing if there is one or more tracks that are in both lists of tracks. Lastly, this while loop runs until we find a match. So this line adds all the individuals and tracks that result from going out one more step from the start individual than we've gone thus far. So all the people on tracks with Aretha Franklin, then the next time it runs, it's all the people on tracks with Aretha Franklin, the people with you know, it's the outer blue line, um, and so on and so forth. And this line updates the matches uh, list so the while loop will stop if we found a match. Uh, each time through the, that last while loop, like I said, grows exponentially-ish, gets slower and slower and slower with longer and longer paths. So here's a run with the results. Uh, it took more than 14 seconds just to do the breadth first search. That's, that's a lot. We can do better even without worker threads. We can do bidirectional search. Uh, so uh, bidirectional search, right. OK, now at this point, you may be feeling a bit like the, you know, this dog. You might be thinking, when is he going to shut up about this stuff and go back to worker threads? Soon, don't worry. So but first, bidirectional search. Here's how it works. First, Katy Perry is not Kevin Bacon, despite striking resemblance. Second, uh, we look for everyone that's connected to Katy Perry and check to see if Kevin Bacon is in there. He is not. Uh, now we do something different. We bounce back to Kevin Bacon, and we get everyone connected to him. We check to see if there's an overlap. And again, there isn't. And then we do once, you know, we, OK, so right, I, I obviously deleted the slide. That's OK, though. Um, <laughs> so we do one for Kevin Bacon, and so on and so forth, until they share a person. And, it's going to look like this. So here's, here's Breath First Search. That oval on the left is Katy Perry. That oval on the right is Kevin Bacon. They're not the same person. There's all the people that played with Katy Perry. OK, they're not Kevin Bacon. There's all the people that played with, with, with the people that played with Katy Perry. Still no Kevin Bacon. OK, that was Breath First Search. We found Kevin Bacon. Now let's do it with bidirectional search. OK, one step away from Katy Perry. Oh, look, Kevin Bacon. And that, oh, that wasn't an expensive search because we're not going to the outer circles yet. Oh, look, we only had to do one expensive search. We're going to see a lot better performance before we get a match. OK. Um, don't believe me about bidirectional search, or I've gone too fast. Hey, there's a Wikipedia article, and it even talks about big O notation to prove that it's faster and better and all that sort of stuff. Here's what bidirectional search looks like implemented. Um, and 
We're just going to look at the while loop because that's where all the that's where all the interesting change is. Basically, instead of doing just the one side, the start side, we're going to do the start side and the target side. And holy moly, we went from over 14 seconds to less than three seconds. That's awesome. That's probably good enough actually to just call it a day. But wait. Why be bound by a single thread? Rather than doing one breath first search from Katy Perry and then and waiting for it to finish and then checking against Kevin Bacon and waiting for that to finish and then bouncing back to Katy Perry, why not just sort of just let them both run and give you data as fast as they can and every time you get data from one, check to see if you can stop, stop both threads and go from there and see how fast that is. So to create our worker threads this time, we are calling new worker again and this time we are putting the worker code in a file called worker.js. So we'll see that in a moment. There's also a new thing over here in the second argument, which is a worker data property. This allows us to provide the ID of the individual to, to, to start with. Uh, this serializes the data and sends it to the worker, which then unserializes it into its own copy of the data. Now, worker thread, so that's kind of just like passing, you know, basically, you know, more or less JSON data over and then, you know, it, it unserializes the JSON data. It's not exactly JSON data. It can handle circular references and things like that. But worker threads can do this awesome magical thing where if you do things just right, you can share memory and also transfer memory buffers between the main thread and the worker thread. Sharing memory doesn't actually resemble sharing nachos, but I needed an image. Anyway, we're doing this in the app. Worker, we're not doing this in the app. Worker data just sends a copy. But if your data is of a predictable size and format, and there's a lot of it, look at the docs for information on sharing and transferring data. It's really cool. In addition to the shared memory stuff, there's pooling. For this application, we, all, we always need two workers, and we don't care about the cost of starting them up only when we need them. But in an application where, where your needs are more dynamic, and you're trying to get the absolute best performance you can, um, you'll want to investigate having a pool of workers that you use as needed. And there are NPM modules that help you do that if you need to. Anyway, over in the worker, we're reading the worker data value is done like this. We import the worker data property from the built-in worker threads module. And then we read the value of the ID key. Context switching, back to the main thread. Uh, we have an error listener that simply rethrows any unexpected errors. And we call a callback that we use when we receive a message from the worker. The index here is used to distinguish the results in Katy Perry's group from the results in Kevin Bacon's group. We might use zero for Katy Perry and one for Kevin Bacon. Let's head over to the worker code again to see how the worker sends a message. Um, so when the worker is created, it grabs all the tracks the individual is on and also makes a note of the individual ID and uses post message to send the message, and that's it. Uh, that will cause the message event to be emitted in the main thread, resulting in execution of the callback. So let's check out what the callback does. Uh, again, the index is a value that lets us know if we're dealing with Katy Perry or Kevin Bacon, based on the start or the target. Uh, we also get all the individuals for whom the track is derived, tracks are derived, rather. And we check to see if there are any tracks that are on both lists, uh, thus indicating they are expanding circles or overlapping, and we can stop. If we have a match, we call a function called done. We'll check that out in a moment. And if we're not done, we send a message to the worker to go get us another expanding ring of tracks and individuals. I'm not going to show the worker code that listens for the message as it's pretty similar to what we've already seen. If it gets a string value next, it gets the next set of search results and sends them back to the main thread. This is way too much for 25 minutes. Uh, but just know that to receive the message, the workers listen to the message event on the parent port object. So I do want to talk about that done function really quickly, though. It removes the listener we have for both workers. And then it calls this method that's on the worker called terminate. What terminate does is it ends the worker thread and returns a promise that resolves to the return code of the worker code. Uh, if we have cleanup code or whatever, we want to make sure it runs. We can put in an async function and await the value uh, rather than just calling terminate like we're doing here. But in this case, you know, we don't have any cleanup. I don't care. It can exit with an error code. I just want it to go away. So let's do that. And lastly, we print our results. So let's see how it performs. Remember, it took 14 seconds with breath first search. It took, it took just under three seconds with bi-directional search. Oh my gosh, it's less than 700 milliseconds now. I can't believe it. It's unbelievable. Um, by the way, all of these uh, uh, scripts are in the uh, repository I posted earlier, I showed earlier, and that's uh, at palacefemistakes.com link. Anyway, um, now, with my 53 seconds remaining, I have to admit that the main motivation here wasn't really to talk about worker threads, awesome as they are. It was to find out how far I was from Lil Nas X. <laughs> the answer, by the way, is six degrees. Uh, it starts with Lil Nas X. He, of course, you know, recorded with Billy Ray Cyrus on, you know, I had him come on Old Town Road. The second degree is country star Mary Chapin Carpenter, who, along with Billy Ray Cyrus, was on a Dolly Parton song called Romeo. Dolly Parton gets her own slide. 
Uh, the aforementioned Romeo was her 32nd studio album. She wrote it. She produced the record. People who aren't country fans don't realize the extent to which she's in control of her sound and her career. I'm not a country fan, but I recognize that she is a legend and a force to be reckoned with. Do not mess with Dolly. And also, you know, since we're talking about Old Town Road. But the analogous legend and force to be reckoned with in Node is Anna Henningsen. She's the one most responsible for implementing worker threads. And as far as all things Node go, it is extremely difficult to give Anna too much credit. So I'm, I'm up here talking about worker threads, but like she did 99.999% of the hard work to get this done, and the other 0.01% was done by people who aren't me. Um, anyway, back to this nonsense. After Dolly Parton's track, Mary Chapin Carpenter goes through Saturday Night Live band leader G. Smith and Tom Waits, trumpet player before getting to me. But why should I restrict fun vanity exercises like this to me? I put this up at a glitch URL, which is, you know, works. Uh, so if you want to, you know, try to connect, <laughs> try to, no, I mean, glitch is great, but I mean, you know, it's like, uh, you know, like, I, you, know, you can just also just get the repository and just run the, the Express app on your local machine. It'll be faster. That's all. Uh, no, Glitch is awesome. I love Glitch. Uh, but you can go over here and try to, you know, see if you can connect, you know, I don't know, Miles Davis to Billy Ray Cyrus. Anyway. Um, yeah, so like I said, everything's at palacefamilysteakhouse.com. Thanks. I'm out of time. And, uh, yeah, thank you. Sorry. That's okay. Also, I would like to do this a few more times.